Hey guys, hope everyone's doing great out there. Today, hammock camping. All right, so many of you may know and see my videos on my rooftop tent. I absolutely love the rooftop tent. It stays on my truck just about all the time. Uh, it brings conveniences that makes camping a little easier. I've got other uh, gear that I've bought for that type of camping that really makes it enjoyable. Some may call it glamping, but whatever. It's fun. We enjoy it, and it is what it is. But when you want to go a little bit more hardcore, you got your pack on, your backpack, you've got your stuff in there. You're going to be out for days and, and nights, and uh, you got to bring all your gear with you. Obviously, a rooftop tent's just not going to work out. So I've used, for years, I've used a traditional tent for that type of uh, camping and experience, and it's done great. And, it's, and I still like my tent. It's a, the one I have now is an MSR Hubba Hubba. I've had this for probably, I don't know, four or five years maybe. And uh, it's done great. Um, it's a good tent. And with it, I usually have to use a pad, a sleeping pad. It's a thermal rest. Uh, it's, a, it's a great pad as well. Um, but about three years ago, <clears throat> I was with, uh, on a trip with some friends and two other guys and they had hammocks and I had my tent. I never thought about a hammock at that time. And I really, I saw their setup and I was very intrigued and, um, I really liked what I saw. I liked the weight reduction that they had, uh, to carry their, uh, their hammock and, and tarp the whole system with them. And so I, I started looking into it. And um, today, what I want to talk about is the setup that I decided on. Uh, I got mine about, it was about, about three years ago, right after that experience, I bought one. Anyway, we're going to talk about uh, the companies I investigated, the, uh, the brand and the type I, I went with, the customizations I had done to it. Um, and again, you know how I am about quality. I, I, I really feel... You know, I, you should try to get as much as you can for your budget. You know, not, not everyone's budget's the same, but try to get the best quality you can. It will, it will last, and more importantly, there's a, a lower chance of failure during your trip, which is, is huge, okay? Uh, there's nothing worse than having gear failures when you're out on a trip, okay? So we're gonna talk about the hammock, we're gonna talk about the tarp, this is a very lightweight, it's a uh, Dyneema fabric, which is awesome. Uh, it doesn't feel like it'd be that durable, but it really is. We're gonna talk about that. And um, because with your hammock, you need a tarp above. Usually, if there's gonna be in inclement weather, if you wanna keep the dew off of you, even if there's not, uh, you really need a shelter over the uh, hammock. We're gonna talk about uh, your, what's equivalent to a sleeping bag in a tent, what you need in a hammock. You can use a sleeping bag, but there's better choices uh, to be made there. And we're gonna talk about insulation during cold weather camping in a hammock that you typically get from the ground in tent camping with a nice uh, insulated pad that you don't have so much with uh, a hammock. But we're gonna talk about that as well, which is what I have as an underquilt. But we're gonna talk about all that today. And uh, as always, if you have any comments to leave, please do so. We learned so much from those comments and I appreciate you taking the time to do that. So with that said, let's get started. Okay guys, here's my setup. First of all, disclaimer, all the products you're gonna to see today were purchased with my own money by my own research. I have no affiliations with any of these companies at this time. Okay, so the hammock I chose was the Sparrow from Dream Hammock. Dream Hammock is a great little company, family-owned business, great people, and they make a very high-quality product. So I couldn't be more pleased with the outcome of this project. The fabric I chose was a 1.7-ounce Mountain Hybrid Ripstop Nylon. It's a lightweight fabric, but the weave, this hybrid weave, makes it very beefy, very durable. It's a 120 denier ripstop grid with a 40 denier base fabric. So it's a great combination, allows me to have a lighter fabric, but really hold up extremely well. Now I went with some orange accents, as you can see, uh, the uh, zipper pulls, some stitching, the hoods. Uh, so you can, you, you can make it your own with the different fabrics. The color here is called foliage. 
and um, the hammock is 11 foot long. So again, you can choose the length, you can choose the width. Um, I made mine as wide as possible in relation to the length. You can choose that as an option. They'll, they'll do that for you automatically instead of you choosing an actual width. So anyway, highly recommend Dream Hammock. Couldn't be happier with their products. Their quality is excellent. All right, so a very easy way to uh, secure your backpack up off the ground while at camp is just take a piece of paracord, create a loop on each end, wrap it around a tree, run one end through one of the loops, and then place a carabiner on the other end and it hangs up there very well. Okay, so there's a company called Dutchwear Gear I'm gonna to refer to a few times here. They made some great products as far as securing lines, tie outs, ridge lines, that type of thing. Here is their Dutch hook. Very little simple product that works out quite well in securing one end of your tarp while on the other end, and by the way, I'm showing my tarp still in the sleeve here so you can see the hammock. But the other end of the tarp um, tie down, I've got what's called their Wasp. Uh, great little product that allows you to secure that in but also give adjustability. So you can tighten or loosen very quickly, which I think is very key with products of this type. Now another product of theirs uh, that acts in the same way is a tarp connector. This allows the tarp to be secured on the ridge line, but also very quickly loosened and repositioned if needed, which is very critical for a tarp in relation to where it is uh, to your hammock. Uh, another product of theirs is the beetle buckle. So this buckle attaches your continuous loop to the suspension system that's, that's wrapped around the tree uh, for your hammock. And again, adjustability very quickly. You, you turn the buckle in a downward fashion, allows you to adjust the tension and release it, and it holds it in place. Great products from Dutchwear Gear. Okay, now here is some accessories I picked up from Dream Hammock uh, for storage in the hammock itself. Uh, the Ridgeline Sling, great simple pouch with elastic at the top. It's, it's very easy to get into. I've got it secured with a couple shock cords and some pressic knots that allows me to move it along the ridge line in an area that I would like and then secure it in place. Um, the, another product I picked up was the ridge line organizer. Very simple, six little mesh pockets just for small items and I can move that to whatever location I would like. Uh, the open pocket organizer, very much like the ridge line organizer, but it's sewn into the side. So it's always in the same place, which is kind of cool, and you're not gonna leave it at home. So another benefit to that accessory. The Peak Shelf, love it. I love it for clothing, larger items. I can stuff up in there and they'll stay in place. I use it for clothing that I wanna remove when I'm going to sleep, but I wanna put back on prior to getting out of the hammock. So love the Peak Shelf. It's a great addition to the setup. Now the gear sling is an accessory that's so versatile. I really like it. It can be used in so many ways. I've got it shown here attached to some tie out hooks. Uh, you could put it on the ridge line itself. You could attach it to the tree beside your backpack. It has a zipper for the orientation. I'm showing it here to get in from the top, but both ends have uh, accessibility as well through drawstrings. So again, all these accessories have great uses and uh, good versatility for storage on your hammock setup. Okay, here's a setup with the net top section. Uh, obviously use this for, for bugs the summertime for the most part. Uh, sometimes I go without it in the early spring or late fall when it's not too cold yet and the bugs have really kind of uh, gone away for the season. Here I'm showing the zipper system, which is a really cool idea from Dream Hammock. So they have a little tab there that keeps the zippers from going any further in each direction. So it gives you a good home position, consistent placement of those zipper pulls when the top cover is closed. Great idea from Dream Hammock, because sometimes you're trying to find them in the middle of the night. This gives you a consistent location every time. Now the netting is a standard for the hammock. The solid cover is an option. I use this obviously in the winter time and with the solid cover, you want to have vents to control condensation. So I chose the extra large vents on both, both the head and the foot end. They do make even a larger vent 
for more visibility. But this is what I went with. It works out great for me. Again, the zipper system is the same as the full net. And um, in my case, I went with a little bit lighter weight fabric. So you see a little bit of coloration difference. Okay, now we're gonna deploy the tarp. I highly recommend this netted sleeve. Uh, it's, it's great, it was 20 bucks, best 20 bucks I've spent on camping gear. But it really helps in um, packing up the tarp, keeping it contained in a very compact fashion. But as you can see here in the video, it's also very easy to deploy in this net. So once you have it secure on both ends, you just slide the, the sleeve off and your, your tarp is uh, in position to be tied down. And putting the, the tarp back in the sleeve isn't really much harder. You just keep it secured on both ends, pull the sleeve over the tarp, and you're ready to pack it up. Okay, here's the tarp fully deployed. I got this tarp from Hammock Gear. Uh, it's 12 foot long. I wanted it to be a little bit longer than my 11 foot hammock to give me full protection. It's also made out of Dyneema fiber. It's a very lightweight fabric, very durable. And I think it's the lightest weight fabric for this type of application. Um, and it's totally non-absorbent of water, which is great. So if it rains, uh, dew in the morning, what have you, there's not gonna be any water absorbed into the material. Now, I bought this tarp with doors. So what that means is there's extra material on the ends that allows you to close it up on both ends to really be fully protected from the elements. And it's a great design. Now, instead of tying them down in a traditional way uh, with stakes and, and cord, and then pulling them back with the, the tie backs, I found someone who had done something with shock cord and connectors. That really was a great idea. I stole the idea, I used it, I'm showing it here. If you have any questions on how to do it, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. But it really works out well for closing it up nice and tight and also opening it up to let air flow. Works out perfectly. And here you can see what I'm referring to as far as opening the doors up and tying them back. So basically I'm using the shock cord from the doors on each end and connecting them together. It works out great, and it's very easy to disconnect as well. So great design. Uh, whoever thought of this did a great job, and I was just happy to be able to duplicate it. Okay, as far as establishing more room under the tarp, you can attach your trekking poles or some other rod or pole or stick that you find uh, to give you a little bit more space underneath. Uh, the tarp does come with connecting points that you can put some, uh, some paracord on there and, and kind of pull it up a little bit, give you a little bit more room underneath. Another configuration would be to form kind of an awning. I would use this if I found myself needing to spend a lot of time under there. Let's say the weather is really bad, you're kind of forced to stay indoors, so to speak, while you're camping. This would be the setup I would use to give me a little bit more space uh, due to having to spend so much time within that confined area. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about quilts. Insulating for colder weather and just comfort as well. So we're gonna talk about a top quilt, in an underquilt. Let's start with the underquilt. The underquilt really, in my opinion, is there for cold weather camping. I mean, if you're very cold natured, you may use it in warmer temps, but for me, <clears throat> it's um, in the 40s and below is when I start bringing uh, an underquilt. So if you think about why you need an underquilt, um, again, when you're tent camping, as I mentioned before, you're on the ground, the ground is an insulator in itself, then you usually have an insulated insulated pad and that's usually enough uh, for tent camping in a hammock you're suspended above the ground there's nothing underneath you to insulate you from the cold weather now if you think well i'll just <clears throat> wrap my uh, uh my top quilt or my um sleeping bag around me well that's fine but when you lay on top of that bag you're compressing that fill and it's doing very 
little to insulate you. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's why you need an underquilt. Underquilts attach under the hammock loosely, snug but loosely. Snug enough where uh, a breeze or cold can't come through, um, but um, uh, loose enough where the fill is not compressed. Okay, hope that makes sense. So let's talk about what I've got. Now I got both of these, the under quilt and my top quilt from UGQ, Underground Quilt Outdoors. Great company, kind of like Dream Hammock. Very custom as far as what you can do. It's endless, the things you can do to these as far as the choices and the uh, options. This one is called the Bandit, okay? Now, let me give you the specs on this guy. Okay, so it's kind of hard to tell. I'll show you some shots of it on the hammock. Uh, now, one thing I did, you can get this in different lengths, okay? Um, I got it full length. I wanted to cover the entire hammock. Uh, I really don't have a need to bring this out in warmer climates. So some people, will, you can order a three-quarter length, a seven-eighths length, or a full length. And, I, and mine is actually an extra long length. Um, and then um, when you attach it to the hammock, uh, there's a suspension system here. Okay, there's a, a shock cord here that ties it up to the hammock. And then there's a, a secondary, that's the primary suspension. There's a secondary suspension system that actually kind of snugs it up on each end. Okay, and then there's these little draft collars, <clears throat> which are kind of cool. It kind of really snugs up to the hammock and, and keeps the cold air from coming in, okay? But allows you to run the, uh, the under quilt loosely so the insulation factor stays very high. Okay, so here's the specs on mine. The length that I got was 83 inches. It comes in lengths of 55, 66, 77, and 83. I got the 83. I want it to be from head to toe underneath me. Uh, the fill power, now that's the other thing too on both these quilts, um, there's different fill power. What that is, is um, the lower fill power is actually a duck down, where the upper fill powers uh, they have listed are actually goose down. So the difference there is uh, it takes more of the 800 fill to get a insulating factor equivalent to the 850 or the 950, okay? So I got the 800 in this case, and then I got it overstuffed with two more ounces, okay? So a little bit bulkier than if I'd gone with the 950, but you know, it's price versus what you're getting out of this. And I didn't mind carrying a little bit more, a slightly more weight, not a whole lot, a little bit more bulky. It does, it does uh, stuff down pretty small because it's down into your uh, stuff sack. And I put it into a compression bag, which helps as well. Um, so I got the 800 fill, uh, overstuffed with two ounces. The temperature rating on this is 20 degrees. Okay. For me, that's a perfect temperature. I really don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to need it for warmer temps and I'm really not going to camp when, if I get too cold, even though I have been out in some pretty cold weather, typically I do not. Um, got the draft collar at standard, as I mentioned, uh, the colors, the inner shell on this one is black. It's called an M10 fabric, which is a, a very soft fabric, by the way, even though this is not really coming in contact with your skin. Um, and then the outer fabric I got is the um, PRY M1 Woodland Camo. And I think this is a really cool looking camo, as you can see. Uh, so I like that color combination. Again, you can make it your own. There's so many different choices on colors. It's almost overwhelming, to be honest with you. But uh, this is what I chose. I like it. It turned out well. Um, suspension shock cord is another option. I got the heavier. I got the eighth inch opposed to the uh, 330 seconds. And then the uh, stuff sack. Um, actually, this is a, a loose kind of a, a mesh bag. Uh, one thing about storing these things, anything down like this, you really don't want to store it really compacted. You want it to be loose. You can either hang it up or you can uh, put it in a loose bag like this. I prefer to do this. It's a little easier to store. It takes up less room than if I just had them hanging up. So anyway, that is the under quilt. Uh, any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd be glad to answer them uh, the best I can. But 
Actually, absolutely love this product. Again, it is the Zeppelin by UGQ. Okay, now let's move to the top quilt. All right, again, UGQ, same company. Uh, in this case, I made some different choices um, than what I had uh, put into the um, under quilt, okay? I decided in this case to go with the, um, the higher end feel to make it lighter and less bulky. Um, so anyway, let's go through this. All right, so this is called the Bandit XL. I got it extra long. And um, again, the top quilt, let's talk about first why a top quilt. Okay, I have a really nice sleeping bag as well, which I used on my first couple trips. The thing about a top quilt versus a sleeping bag is really a sleeping bag stripped down. You know, without the full zippers, it's got a suspension system that kind of snugs you, but it's a lot easier to get in and out of in a hammock. You know, you can maneuver around it a lot easier. You kind of wrap it around you and it kind of snugs to you because um, you're not really worried about having it underneath you if it's, again, colder temps and you're using your under quilt. So that's uh, pretty much what a top quilt is in comparison to a sleeping bag. Um, on this one, what I got was the, uh, it's the same temperature rating, 20 degrees as my under quilt. Um, I did go for the 950 fill. I didn't get any over stuff in it, just the 950 fill. It made it lighter, but with a good choice there, I felt. Um, and let's see what else. The length, I got 78 inches, uh, which I believe is the long. I don't know if it's the extra long. They kind of changed their, their sizing. They've gone from uh, short, regular, long, and extra long, where I had ordered it as a 78 inch. I can't remember where that fell. The width now listed as slim, regular, wide, and extra wide. I got the 60 inch. So again, I'm, I'm not sure where it falls in there. I think it's either the regular or the wide. Um, and again, if you answer questions on their site, their site is very intuitive. I mean, it, it's great. It really walks you through everything. And I'm talking about UGQ here. And, and really helps you and, and has explanations for certain things like overstuffed in, in the different feel categories. So it really, really walks you through it very, very well. Um, the draft collar, this was an option on this where it's a standard on the underquilt. I did get the draft collar. I like that feature so you can wrap it around you. It really hugs to your neck and keeps the cold out on those very, very cold nights. Um, the foot box, okay, what I wanted was I'm going to use this as just a regular blanket as well. So I could uh, zip out the foot box. The foot box I got is a draw cord and a zipper. So it, it makes a nice foot box, but also can be unzipped and um, the cord can be taken out. And now it's just a full flat uh, blanket. Whereas you can also get a more constructed foot box that's more um, set as a foot box only. And then you get one that's really heavily insulated as well if, you, if you're really cold natured on your feet. All right, so I got the uh, foot box that's draw cord and zipper. I got no taper. Again, I want it to be flat, square, or rectangular. And uh, I didn't want any taper. I like to kind of move around in mine. I don't like the mummy style uh, sleeping uh, bag. So I want it to be um, uh, a little bit more roomy on the inside. Uh, pad attachments. I did get pad attachments on here, but I don't know if I'll ever use a pad in the uh, in the hammock. But that's preference. And then again, the storage sack. Highly recommend always using the storage sack uh, when you're storing it between trips. It's fine to really put these into a uh, a stuff sack and compress them down, but not for long periods of time. Uh, as far as colors, I got the dark olive on the on the inside and. Um, it's that M10T fabric as well. It's very soft to your skin, so it's really nice. And then I got the, um, the blackout camo on the outside, which I thought turned out pretty cool. It's not as noticeable as I thought it was gonna be, but still it's pretty cool. It really just probably looks black on the camera, but it's got a little bit of a camo design on it. So anyway, so one other thing I wanna to mention too, as far as the construction of the top quilt, they use a, a baffle design that's pretty interesting. They About two thirds of this, of this quilt is actually a, um, a vertical baffle system. And then the foot box is horizontal. 
Now, what that does is it kind of compartmentalizes the, the down feel so that you can um, mix it up. So in other words, I can have a heavier downfield foot box if I'm very cold natured with my feet than with the rest of my body. So it's kind of cool. It gives you some options there. Um, and also because of the baffle system, it keeps the down from migrating to uh, just certain areas and, and it really keeps a good consistency of the down all over the blanket. So again, highly recommend it. Great products. I've been very pleased with them. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, it's amazing that all this fits in such a small space on your backpack. It's incredible. A lot of good gear here. Uh, we have some great times uh, using this gear, of course. And I uh, hope this video helped you. Uh, it always helps me to get comments back. I hope you uh, can take the time to do so. And throw any questions. I may be able to help you. Or I might be able to lead you to the right place to get the answers. So, um, as always, we appreciate the support on the channel. Sorry we haven't done many videos lately. We're going to do more. We've got a lot of uh, good ideas for the future, and we want to start uh, spending time doing so. So, uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, have a great time out there.